The next interview, a lot of you have actually requested, particularly after our interview yesterday with the horse breeder who was turned down for giving half a million dollars, not being able to give half a million dollars to Starship. And so many people texted and contacted me and said that money should go to Gumboot Friday, to Mike King's uh, outfit. And unfortunately, because of the timing involved, it couldn't. Uh, also, I found that another $10,000 donation from someone in the racing industry was turned away by Starship, who seemed to have a woke um, conscience that is probably doing them uh, no favours whatsoever. Um, but it is, in case you didn't know, Gumboot Friday. Uh, lots of New Zealanders know about it, uh, and certainly my social media feeds uh, suggest that. Um, but it is a good cause, and the guy who runs it has no problem speaking his truth and speaking truth to power on the issue of mental health in this country, and it's always a pleasure talking to him. So a very warm welcome to Mike King. G'day, Mike. How are you, mate? Morning, Shawnee. How are you, bro? Yeah, getting there. Getting there. Um, big day for you. The biggest day of the year for you, I imagine, is going to be Friday. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, we... Last year, this time last year, counselling was costing us... Uh, around eighty thousand dollars a month um uh two months ago it was three hundred and eighty thousand dollars a month so it's a service that's and right. that's not because people are charging more that's because the volume of people who need the services has gone up right actually since we started the price of counseling has come down uh it's yeah it's come down from 136 to 127. yeah Mike, for, for and, people who have been and, living and, and, un, under a rock, what yeah. is Gumboot, and, and don't know, what is Gumboot Friday all about? Just give us the, the yep. quick guide. So Gumboot Friday was set up to, one, give people uh, faster access, uh, young people, 25 and under, faster access to uh, face-to-face counselling <clears throat> without, um, without the stigma. And it was also designed to take pressure off our our crisis system. How did we arrive at this and how did we know this was a problem? Um, so in order for a young person, 25 or under, to get free counselling sessions from um, our lovely government, you have to be first uh, diagnosed mentally ill. And then you carry that little wee, um, that little wee uh, stigma around with you for the rest of your life, that follows you around for the rest of your life. Uh, then you go on an excruciatingly long waiting list before eventually seeing a burned out, underfunded, under-resourced uh, mental health worker. Um, and the problem that we've got is um, people are going to the doctors and everyone has been thrown into a funnel. All these kids and young people have been thrown into a funnel and they can only pull them out one at a time. So there's a major choke point. So um, what we've done is we've just designed a system where people can go to gumbootfriday.com uh, and four clicks of a button, you uh, can see a counsellor in under six days. Yeah, and that's a hell of a service. Uh, that's a hell of a service, uh, Mike. And it's, and it's free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point too. But it's free because you work your butt off going around gathering the money so it can be free to the people who need it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's um, it's one of those things, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to do something, run it first, build the platform, do everything that I needed to do um, to make this, um, to make it work. And then the idea was to go to the government and say, hey, how about funding it? And, and here's the carrot for you, government. 100% of any money you put in will go directly to councillors and I will take care of the um, the admin costs. Um, so 100% of people's money still goes towards the um, counselling. I still take care of the admin costs and the government go and stuff you. We'd rather pay $485 at a minimum for a counselling session. That can, that can be a 10-minute phone call with a receptionist. Yeah. Um, so you look outside government for, for your funding, Mike, and on Gumboot Friday, you look to the New Zealand community as a whole. How can people help out in this good cause? So what's the process today um, for, well, for sharing the burden? Well, for people, they can just, you know, the first, first and foremost, go to the website, gumbootfriday.com, and see how simple it is, because we don't want just people to donate. We want people to be aware that the system is there and how easy it is so they can tell other young families uh, who may be having kids where it is. 
And then down the bottom of the page, there is also uh, five, six different donation options. Um, if you don't have time to go and look at the website, text BOOTS to 469 and make an automatic $3 donation. BOOTS 469. Okay. That's all you need to do. Yep. Okay. That is great. Um, sorry, you text BOOTS to the text number 469. Is that yep. right? Right. Text, yep. Text BOOTS to 469. Okay. Instant three dollar donation. Okay, that's a three buck donation. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's the cost of a week's subscription when we get it going. A week's subscription to um to the platform. Uh, Mike, I know that also uh, you know when you're not doing Gun Boot Friday, when it's not if you like the broader appeal, um you're knocking on a lot of corporate doors um to get yep. the wherewithal to keep things running. How has that been in the past year? And I know you have been, you have made justified criticisms of the bureaucracy and government policies. Has that closed corporate doors for you when it comes to donations? No, no, actually we're, we're probably the most um, um, well-funded charity in the country. Um, I, I, I think the broad appeal for corporates is um, you know, they're helping us to, to give this free counselling service to New Zealanders. But also, at, at a lower level, we, um, my young ambassadors are in schools right up and down the country uh, um, normalising counselling with young people, normalising uh, the inner critic and overthinking, and, and really hitting those grassroots hard and, and making young kids um, aware that everyone has troubled thoughts, everyone has mixed emotions, this is a normal part of life, um, and if you talk to an expert in in, um, in fractured thoughts, a counsellor, you can get over a little problem in no time at all. And we provide that service at no cost to the schools. Yeah, so, that's cool. You know, we're, just, we're just doing the best that we can to um, do the best by our kids, you know. And, and the biggest problem um, facing young people today is imposter syndrome and overthinking. And when you... When you, when you look at the reason for that, I mean, kids are living in a world where they're constantly being criticized by the big people in their life. The big people in their life are failing to show emotion, are failing to talk about their troubled thoughts. So our poor kids are sitting there at home going, it's just you, you're the broken one, it's just you. And, and you know, and when you're watching your parents hold on to their problems and not talk about them as a kid, you know, it becomes the norm. You can't talk about this. You can't talk about this. You've always got to be happy. You've always got to be smiling. So just normalizing, talking to parents and families and say, hey, ma'am, how about being a little bit more vulnerable uh, so your kids know it's normal to be vulnerable. If you want your kids to cry, guess what? you got to cry. If you want your kids to reach out and ask for help and talk about their feelings, guess what? You've got to talk about your feelings. Don't tell me, show me. And that's the message for today. Yes. Stop telling you what your kids what to do. Start showing them what to do. Start showing them how to be human beings. Yeah. We have snake oil salesmen out there today selling happiness to our children, saying, you must be happy, you must be happy. Uh, and I explained to the kids, you know, emotions are like the weather, and summer is happy. What happens if the sun shines 365 days a year? Everything dies. We need to have rain. We need to have tears. We need to have anger. All of these things are a normal part of human nature. Happiness, yeah, 365 days a year, an Ain't absolute fit. Yeah. yeah. Mike, there has been what the government and some have touted as good news an apparent reduction in what has hitherto been our appalling suicide rate in this country. You've called, this bu you've called bullshit on those statistics. Why? This is the this is the biggest lie that this government is telling people. It is impossible for our figures to be 538. Now I'll, I'll start real simple. In, in 2018, when we we're at our highest, 685. Over the last three years, they have come down to 538. So nearly a 150 people reduction. Now, if if St. John's is saying hmm, their mental health call-outs call have gone up 30%, if the police are saying 60% of their call-outs at night now are mental health-related, 
If our crisis teams are completely overwhelmed and can't reach everyone, if families are being turned away from hospitals and mental health facilities saying that there is no room, if kids who have attempted suicide are being turned away before they even get into care, it is impossible for this number to come down. And <clears throat> here's one that most people don't know about. 538 suicides this year. Uh, well, up till September 30 this year, 214 people took their own lives by the legal jab. 214 people. They don't count. Now, the last what do you mean the legal looked, jab, Mike? You know, the death by, by needle. You know, the, um, you know... Uh, Did that, we have like, 214 by, by, euthanized 214. people? 214! Jeez, Two, I'm sorry, Mike, eight, that is a figure I was until you mentioned it completely unaware of, and it disturbs They're me. hiding it, Sean. They're hiding it. So what now, have we got... Oh, so hang on. What have we got for... Um, what have we got for suicide this year on the official figure? 538. Five, and we add on 200 and what? 14, 14, 214 14. To, to that, 21, 3, 4, 5. Well, there's your figure, isn't it? There's your figure. Now, if you look at the figures, now, like, like, uh, you look at the figures, the biggest drop in suicide, the biggest unexplained drop in suicide are white people 40 and over. Oh, b bingo. Well, you've solved it. You've solved the mystery. So we aren't doing any better, and we can't We're say we are. We're not doing any better. We are not doing any, but, and these, these deaths are not counted as suicide. Now, if you look in the dictionary for the description of, you know, someone who, uh, a suicide, it is someone who takes their life by their own hand. Bingo. Well, Mike, so the, we then uh, need to have, and our statisticians oh, no, 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 and bureaucrats, no, wait a minute. they need to include that figure now in suicide stats. No, but wait a minute, wait a minute. That does not include the fact that the, that the investigations by the uh, coroners into sudden deaths has gone from around 350 in 2012 to less than 30 this year. So they're not even investigating anymore. So the 538 that were listed today were the absolute certainty. The absolute certainty. Mm. Now, the, the, the threshold for a suicide to be ruled a suicide is exactly the same as a murder trial. It has to be beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, the reason this is important, if I'm in my car and I drive into a cattle truck and I have a note beside me saying I'm going to take my own life, the coroner can then rule that even though that note was there and even though I could have fell asleep at the wheel, I could have been sunstruck, I could have been unaware, so that doesn't necessarily have to rule. And there are plenty of those where people have taken their lives by their own hands and the coroner has turned around and said, in my opinion, that doesn't reach the threshold. Yeah. Wow. But we're well, not even investigating those anymore. Yeah. Well, and in many ways, Mike, and man, that I, I think a lot of people, myself included, uh, rock back on the heels. I'm getting texts about... Um, that voluntary euthanasia number, um, God, they kind of haven't made any um, song and dance about that, have they? That's amazing. As oh, someone there's who some has... amazing stats around it. There's yeah. some amazing stats around it. Eighty percent of them are taking their, you know, like it's happening in their own homes. Uh, you know, not many in hospice. Uh, a smaller number in rest homes. It's 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 a really, really, really interesting. But they're hiding that one. They're, yeah, they're not yeah, yeah absolutely. Them. Mike, the other thing is, no matter what the statistics or the trend in the statistics are, and I say this, unfortunately, from personal experience this year, as I lost a brother to suicide, um, every suicide, no matter what the trend is, is a bloody tragedy, isn't it? Well, well, and is preventable, thing. and is preventable. Yeah. You know what, what I find really annoying is the people who are working in mental health are taking, taking uh, glory from this. You know, they're celebrating these numbers coming down. You know, people who say to me, we should target 20%. All right, there's 100 kids in that have been building over there. Go grab 20 of them and tell me you feel good about yourself. Yeah. We need to try. Uh, I'm sick of watching this hypocrisy of this road to zero. 
you know, there's, we're allowed to have a, a target of zero for cars, but we're not allowed to have a target for zero uh, for suicides because it doesn't make governments look good. When I put that to the Prime Minister about let's have a target of zero, she was like, well, you can't, and gave me a whole lot of crap. But the real reason was because people would pick you up on it. Yet you have the, you know, you have the temerity to show me on on uh, the TV this Road to Zero ad. And I tell you, what, uh, the other thing that made me vomit the other night was the was the the Prime Minister talking about Kiwis caring about misinformation. One of our biggest concerns is misinformation. They have spent over three hundred and fifty million dollars on spin doctors spreading misinformation, including the uh, the suicide figures. The biggest biggest dealers in misinformation in this country are the Labour government. Well, I've got to say, Mike, I'm way more concerned about the death toll from our poor mental health system than I am about terrorism. Me okay. too, my brother. Yeah. Mike, how are you doing, mate? Because I know you are a passionate individual and yeah, I, know. I know you're an emotional man and there have been a few instances, I think, in the media in the last week where you've, you've showed that emotion. This isn't an easy thing you do. How are you going? You know, the one thing that really gets me, brother, is all the people that say to me, you need to take care of yourself. You need, we've got this. We've, have you really? Have you really <laughs> got it? Yeah. You know, because if I step out, are you going to step up? Um, no. And, you know, look, People don't just need help. People don't just need help. And this isn't just for the kids, you know, who, who, who are dying. This is for the families of parents, the parents out there that can't get the help. They need to know that they don't need just need help. They need hope. They need someone there who's answering the phone. So my wife and I, we dedicate, we dedicate ourselves to this, you know. We, we answer every single email, every message via um, social media, every single text, every single phone call because people need to know someone out there uh, someone out there that cares. Now, I want to change the system. If you want to change the system, then you have to be the system you want the system to be be and i want a system where people can get help they can be heard they know that people are feeling their pain and they are not alone so i'm not going to stop until that system comes in and 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 if i die before that system comes in then shame on the government now people can do stuff about this we've got to we've got to the stage in this country where people think but what can i do what can i do you have social media you can can protest. You can protest loudly. Oh no, you're going to be accused of uh, spreading disinformation then and being a, a stirrer and someone will dob you into the SIS, Mike. It sounds to me, Mike, like you've got extreme views. Oh, and they're hey, dangerous. Brother, brother <laughs> I have to go. My wife's on the other line. She's the most important person in the world. I hey, love Mike, you. it is always a pleasure and I love you greatly, my friend. Go well. That is uh, Mike King. Um, and he did have to go. His wife is alive. We had limited time for a man. That was interesting. I am amazed, and I just haven't. It hasn't. Well, I guess no spin doctor was given the job of publicising the last year's euthanasia figures. What do you think of that? I think that's an amazing and disturbing um, and disturbing thing. 214 people died by euthanasia. Uh, we got five minutes. Give me a ring and tell me what you think about that number. People are sending me texts, how could that happen? Well, because Parliament passed a law that said you could kill yourself under certain circumstances. 214. Well, you add that on to the supposedly really good suicide figures and then you're seeing that our suicide rate is not going down and Mike nailed it. Mike absolutely nailed it. Um, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if... Um, if Mike was sort of made the new Minister of Mental Health under a new government, that'd be fantastic.